Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. On this August 1st, I want to get into the hurricane outlook for this month, when it will get more active, what could prevent some development. I want to show you what I'm seeing out there as a whole, get into that very specifically for you. This map, kind of a crazy map, I like to show this, not in, a, in an alarming way, but just as a reminder that storms could impact all of us, uh, or at least most of us, uh, depending on where you're watching this from. Uh, tropical storms and hurricanes, again, have covered a great area. This is out in time. Again, this is from 1949 as we dip back in time in the Pacific, the data from 1949, the Atlantic Basin. This is the data from 1851. And of course, a lot of storms and hurricanes were missed way back when before we had satellites, those eyes in the sky looking down. But you could see anywhere from Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago through the Caribbean, Jamaica, uh, Gulf of Mexico, Texas, Eastern Seaboard, Canada, Bermuda, again, uh, even Southern California. California. We had a system nearby, remember that, last year. So all of us need to pay very close attention as we go forward in the season. That is why I do this channel, to keep you covered. Thank you for subscribing, liking these videos, and sharing it. This is a weather community. It is for you. You can leave comments, all that sort of thing. I'm going to stay on top of these storms for you. That is my promise to you. Now, in August, typically, it's basically, as I like to say, open for business. All areas can see development. Gulf of Mexico, back into the Caribbean, and really in the open waters now, the Atlantic, watching these strong waves that'll come off the coast of Africa. By waves, I don't mean ocean waves, I mean atmospheric waves, kind of ripples in the atmosphere, storm systems that come off of Africa. Africa this time of year, because of the global circulation, you get a lot of thunderstorm buildup, and then it feeds off across the Atlantic through the trade winds, hits the warm water, and if environmental conditions are right, you get storms developing. But across the Atlantic Basin, which includes the Gulf Caribbean and Atlantic itself, again, conditions uh, need to be watched everywhere. Now, one thing I watch are the water temperatures, and we've talked about this together. Water temperatures have been super warm. They're almost always warm this time of year, but they have been extra warm. Now, you can see Gulf of Mexico, for example, 31 degrees Celsius. We've had some temps in north of Cuba, just south of Florida, even by the Florida Keys in the upper 90s lately uh, Fahrenheit. So again, that is crazy warm. But I don't just look at the water temperatures. I also look at the depth of the warm water. That's called heat content. And that's very important because as a hurricane, tropical storm moves over the water, kind of churns it up. And if it brings up cooler water, that could weaken a system, which is good. But if that warm water goes deep down uh, as the system goes on top of it, it just brings up more warm water and that just could feed these systems. And that's going to be an issue. One of the issues is now water temperatures alone don't start a system, but they could feed a system for sure. And if we get something developing that goes over these very warm waters, they could rapidly intensify. The water is so warm. So if something gets going, we could see some uh, systems getting very strong in a hurry. That is a concern this time of year. I just showed you why those water temperatures. And look at this map. See this kind of uh, orangey shading or yellow shading throughout much of the Atlantic, Gulf, and the Caribbean. Well, these are the water temperatures versus average. The yellow, orangey, red shading, those are above average temperatures. So these numbers have been running above average all across the board for the most part. And that is an issue I'm going to be watching out for. Now, as we go forward, typically it does get more active. We're deeper into the season. We're deeper into the uh, summer. So the water temperature is naturally getting warmer. August, September, and October, we get into the peak of the season. The peak of the season is September 10th. That's kind of the midpoint of the season as far as activity is concerned. 84% of all named systems on record have happened in August, September, and October. This is the heart of the season. We're just getting started with it. Again, the next three months, that's when most of the action happens. Now, it's been above average so far. We've had Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don. Don, by the way, became a brief hurricane, what was that, last week, in the North Atlantic. So it was our first hurricane of the season, but where we like it 
over the open waters. There was also an unnamed system that formed in January. So there's that, and it rolled up toward Canada. It wasn't classified at the time, but it, they went back and they said, hey, that was definitely uh, kind of a subtropical system. So there's actually already been five. The next name on the list is Emily Franklin and then Gert after that. Now, I don't just look at the water temperatures. I don't just look at the uh, computer models, but I really look at all of the environmental conditions. There's a lot of ingredients in play. Now, I'm gonna get to this blob in a second. So hang on, we'll talk more about this blob and where that's headed. But let me show you this. Again, here's the coast of Africa. Get the thunderstorm complexes that come off this time of year. One thing I've been seeing, though, is all that dry air. You've been dealing with it as well. If you've been dry, you have been super hot. We've had Saharan dust around. This is my dry air tracker. This here takes a snapshot of really the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And you see the orange on the map, and it is jumping out at you. Even some of these reds, this is the dry air. So what's been happening lately is these tropical waves come off the coast of Africa. Again, again not ocean waves. These are atmospheric waves, ripples in the atmosphere. They come off the coast of Africa, these thunderstorm complexes, and they run into this dry air. So conditions are not conducive for development. And from what I've been looking at, and I look at everything short term and long term, this dry air is gonna to try to hold over the next two weeks. So I do not expect a fast start to August. So let me get into that outlook specifically for you. Again, dry air, as I just showed you, is dominant out there. It is dominant in the Atlantic Basin. Doesn't mean something can't spin up, especially close to home. Sometimes you get little old fronts, complexes of rain and storms around in the Gulf and the Caribbean. So there could be a spin up, but at least the next two weeks, I expect a quieter start to the month of August, but there are some signs by mid to late August, there's gonna be uh, more moisture in the column of air in the, in the atmosphere out there. More moisture in the Atlantic, in the atmosphere, and that would lead to the possibility of more development. So I do expect a more active finish to the month. We'll see how active it is, but again, overall, quieter start, a more active finish. And the hurricane season, I mentioned the next three months are the busiest, it goes through the end of November, and last year, uh, there's a reason for that. It was so active. We had a lot of flooding in spots even into November in some spots with some unnamed systems in the tropics. Now, here's what's going on. As promised, watching this blob right here, thought this was going to become Emily a few days ago, but conditions haven't been super good for that to happen, which is good. But again, that is just kind of sitting there. It may develop a little bit, but that is going to drift more to the north. And again, I was showing the steering conditions. That is a huge thing for where these things go. I was showing you that last week, how there would be sort of a fence along the east coast of the United States. And you see that right here. There's an old front or a trough here. And that's why this system has stayed away. Even that system right there, this little blob will not develop. That is going to stay in the North Atlantic. And a lot of this action even missing the Atlantic region of, uh, of Canada. But again, this may or may not develop. But either way, again, trekking more to the north, getting caught up into the front. And that's Dora. I'm going to show you Dora in a second in the Eastern Pacific. I'll get into that in one moment. So there is a name system out there. That is Dora. I'm going to zoom back into that, get into the modeling of that. Hang with me. So here's what's going on. The Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, Jamaica. We have been way too hot and dry. Watching a flare up of some storms that have been near the coast of Belize and Honduras. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, we've seen the rain. Yucatan, Mexico, not a lot. And again, not a ton in the Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern Caribbean, but we'll see a few passing showers. By by the way, it's em Emancipation Day in Trinidad and Tobago. A lot going on today. And again, so far it's been super hot. Have some of that extra water on hand if you can. Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico will get some spotty storms. So let me show you the modeling on this, and then I'll get into the Eastern Pacific. And you see again for today, there's still a passing shower, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Barbados, same thing, Montserrat, Saba. Swing back toward Jamaica, rain chance isn't too high, and I'll get into those forecasts. But again, Guatemala, El Salvador, better chance of rain back through Costa Rica. Again, some pop-up storms possible as we work our way into Puerto Rico. Same thing tomorrow. This is tomorrow afternoon. A little bit of rain possible near St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago. Guyana and Suriname, it's been a little bit more active. Spotty shower in Colombia. But you see the Cayman Islands could see a few passing showers tomorrow. Then some of the afternoon stuff. To, uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti, not a ton in the Bahamas. Passing shower, especially as we get into the uh, eastern end of Cuba as we 
work our way into our Wednesday and then pulling forward into Thursday. Thursday again, scattered storms will be the rule. Generally afternoon stuff as we work our way across the Caribbean. No development expected as we work our way into the Gulf of Mexico. Now into the Eastern Pacific, there is Dora out there. It did develop some strong tropical waves that moved through the Caribbean, allowed a lot of moisture to just kind of build into the Eastern Pacific. Could be a little more development behind it. There is Dora always watching as you work your way toward the Baja, always watching my friends in uh, Mexico, Gulf of California, even Southern California itself. Dora itself is going to move away. It is going to pull away. Now, Dora is the name on the list. The Eastern Pacific side, they're still called hurricanes. As you get more into the Pacific, they're called cyclones, but it's a separate list in the Eastern Pacific. So Dora is the name now, Eugene after that, uh, Fernanda after that, and then Greg. So watching those down the Road. But here's the modeling. So again, in Mexico, this is pulling away. This is not going to swing up toward California. Now, I've been looking at a lot of the modeling and the steering conditions for Hawaii. Once again, there was already tropical trouble, uh, what is that, a week or two ago in Hawaii. A lot of the steering conditions keep this, by the way, turn Dora into a hurricane and then bring it across the Eastern Pacific into the Central Pacific and still keep it together. Most of the steering conditions keep it to the south of Hawaii, but Hawaii needs to keep an eye on this because again, it is going to hang together. So I'll, I'll just kind of wait and see how close it will get to Hawaii down the road. Again, that's days and days away, but I'm watching it for you. Now, Jamaica today, watching some spotty showers and storms possible. A 40% chance. Trinidad and Tobago, lots going on today. Passing shower storm, but I showed you it picks up a little bit tomorrow and Thursday. We're up to about a 50% chance. Grenada, 30% chance today. A 40% chance Wednesday and Thursday. So again, this is not a 100% chance of rain. Um, uh, in most spots, with the exception of Costa Rica and Panama, we're going to see a high chance of rain. I'll get to that in a moment. Barbados today, 40% chance, 50% chance tomorrow in Barbados. St. Lucia, isolated chance of a shower today, 40% chance Wednesday and Thursday. Working our way into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, small chance of a passing shower really today and over the next few days. Does pick up a little bit more tomorrow. Belize, passing shower storm. I showed you again near the coast of Belize. I'll see if that kind of builds in throughout the day. Chance of a few showers. Cayman Islands, we have some nearby and it picks up tomorrow into Thursday. I showed you in the modeling again some of the showers that will be at least nearby. Hopefully you get some showers because we need some. Bahamas, isolated 30% chance over the next few days, a 40% chance on the Turks and Caicos today and tomorrow, a 30% chance by Thursday. Isolated shower or storm passing by in Dominica, we could see one or two, 30% chance in Dominica the next few days, 40% chance in Guadalupe and Martinique today, 30% chance for tomorrow. Puerto Rico, again, this is mainly afternoon stuff. So San Juan, we could get a few afternoon storms. If you get a storm, it'll be strong. If you stay dry, it is going to stay super hot. We get back toward the U.S. Virgin Islands and British Virgin Islands, a passing shower, 30, 40% chance the next couple days. Haiti, again, mainly the afternoon heating from the day stuff. I showed you that Haiti, Dominican Republic. We're looking at uh, a couple showers and storms popping up, isolated, but please be mindful that we could have some of those thunderstorms around back through the Dominican Republic. St. Kitts and Nevis, 30% chance today and tomorrow. Thursday, about a 40% chance. Antigua and Barbuda, rain chance limited, a 20% chance over the next two days. Anguilla, over the next three days, very limited. Again, mainly dry rain chance at 20%. St. Martin, St. St. Bart's rain chance also limited, a 20 to 30% chance over the next three days. Aruba, Curacao and Bonaire. Boy, it has been so dry. We'll see how the end of the month goes with a little more action in the tropics. Otherwise, mainly a dry pattern. Costa Rica, as I was talking about before, that rain chance is very high. Areas of flooding, still a possibility. Costa Rica, Panama, even Nicaragua, watching out for that chance of some flooding. Guyana, rain chance has picked up a little bit. Guyana and Suriname, again, better chance of some scattered showers. Northern Venezuela, about a 30% chance today, tomorrow into uh, Thursday. And then as we work our way into Suriname, again, rain chance is elevated a touch. Scattered showers and storms around a 40 to 50% chance. So with all of that said, the heat is on. It has been dusty as well. Watching that Saharan dust 
dust. If you are dry, it is super hot. The areas of flooding, as I was just talking about in parts of Central America, that Atlantic system, both of those uh, kind of areas I've been watching behaving, uh, not really developing too much and staying over the open waters. And again, the tropical waves are fighting that dry air out there, which is a good thing as of now, of course, with the exception of the areas that need to get some rain. It would be nice if some of these tropical waves would hang together and bring us some rain, fill up some of the uh, cisterns. And again, we are at now approaching the most active time of the hurricane season. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. My promise to you is to keep you covered through the hurricane season.